so videos like this with the inspiration and in fact the aspiration for this polygonal cutting tool uh, for Rough Cut 2022. How hard could it be to replicate that? Oh, welcome back to Ollie's Workshop. Hopefully you're here because you've seen my rough cut entry and you want to get a bit more detail on the polygonal cutting tool that I did. Um, if you've not seen the video already, I'll link it up here. First, I just want to talk through a few of the design decisions I made on this um, to answer a few of the questions that I've had. Um, I had a, a couple of people suggest using a, a keyed shaft and a, a sliding gear for like a chain drive or something to get rid of the slipping issue and... I definitely thought about that in my model I've got a keyway on on this shaft um, and I did try and cut it on the um, ER11 chuck however this was too hard for my milling cutters and I was unable to get the cutter in uh, to, to, to do the cut basically um, which is sort of as I was running out of time I just 3d printed this long pulley because originally it was going to be a normal pulley that slid backwards and forwards um, in which case that could have been replaced by a chain so yes I had considered that and yes potentially could still do that although I think there might be some mileage in altering the way the tensioner belt tensioner works the other thing was um, why is it powered off the spindle and not off the um, the feed shaft or something um, there is a, another video out there by a don't know quite how to pronounce it, Mahamazog or something, I'll, I'll link it in the description or something, um, who made a very nice one of these, um, and it was driven off his feed shaft. Um, and primarily I wanted to make something that would basically fit any lathe and didn't, didn't rely on a certain configuration. You know, this configuration will fit any tool post, and, you know, every lathe's got tail stock, so... Um, Anyone could build this and it could potentially work if I get it to the point where it actually works. Minor point. Of course, the downside with having a, a collet chuck is that you do have to, you know, this method is that you, you would have to plan ahead and include a, a spigot on your part so that you could drive the tool. But, you know, a suitable amount of planning and, and, and that's fine. Um, obviously, there will be certain situations where that's not so possible it was a quick and dirty way to drive this system without relying on any other um any other infrastructure around the around the lathe um just on on parts you know every lathe will have oh so, so the other thing i wanted to address was i don't think anyone actually asked this but why have i done this mechanically and not electronically um this would be fairly straightforward to do um, basically using the same hardware as the cloud 42 electronic lead screw you've got a, you'd have an encoder on the on the spindle um, so it knows how fast that's going and you drive a, a stepper motor or a servo motor for the cutting head um, and then you'd, you'd be able to adjust it to whatever speed and number of cutting you know cut faces and everything you wanted so that be quite flexible however i didn't feel that that was as accessible as making a relatively simple mechanical tool. So the, I did the drawings for this in Fusion and we'll look at those in a minute. Um, I've made them available and uh, I've made the Fusion file available and I've PDF'd the, the machined parts. So the tool head, the uh, main plate here at the bracket and the, the bearing housing that does the tensioning, belt tensioning. Um, there's also a drawing for the bearing housing they will be linked in the description below. Um, I haven't modelled the collet chuck or the tailstock arbor because um, they're just off-the-shelf parts. Um, that is um, an ER11, yeah, 100 millimetre long shaft, 10 millimetres diameter, um, and then I've just used some bearings I had lying around. Um, so again, and, yeah, no drawings for for the tailstock arbor because obviously it would potentially be different depending on what lathe or what bearings you have or what shaft size you're going to use, that kind of thing. And I haven't drawn this shaft here because this is just a plain shaft. So if you want to check out the drawings, they're in the description. So I'm going to go through the um, the build of each of these parts, um, and then at the end we'll come back and we'll take a look at some potential improvements I can make to, to this setup to see if I can get some better results. I won't be enacting those improvements in this video. I haven't had time. I'm planning to do the improvements to 
to this and to last year's tool fest the low profile rotary table try and get that into a slightly more um, presentable state um, I'm going to do those in the new year I think I'm going to do a sort of a, a tidy up of, of half finished projects basically um, I don't think I'm going to get time this side of Christmas it's not long now so this is the model for my rough cut creation um, it's obviously incomplete uh, as I mentioned earlier no tailstock arbor no collet chuck I mean this shaft is just um, drawn in there no detail on it and there's no adjustment knob no belt tensioner pulley but it's got the the key components gives you an idea of what's going on um, so first off we're going to take a look at the cutting head so this is the drawing I've done for the cutting head um, basically it's a disc 15 millimeters by what should be 75 it's come out at 7497 for some reason there must be some rounding errors somewhere none of these dimensions are critical though um, the only one that I tried to get spot on was the the pocket for the tool bit um, it high speed seal tool bit um, these little cutouts here are for um, grub screws to clamp the tool in position I haven't actually detailed those on this drawing just well, partly just because it makes the drawing cluttered but um, they're also non-critical it's four pockets and a uh, I mean I'm, I'm using a 12 millimeter shaft so 12 mil bore in the center so I started off with a slugger metal um, use some uh, parallels just to get it vaguely true in the chuck uh, this was a bit of scrap that I've had for years uh, but it machined absolutely beautifully uh, it must be some sort of free machining uh, steel uh, I used a boring bar to um, sort of clean out the rust in the middle made a little bit of a recess there's no real reason for that other than the part had that sort of large large center in the middle um, and then center drilled and drilled it out uh, for the 12 millimeter shaft that goes through the middle of it um, I did ream the final dimension um, just to try and get it a nice tight fit I'm going to machine, start machining the um, slots for the tool bit Oops, forgot to press record on that last pass, but now we've got our four slots. So I started to cut the um, grub screw reliefs uh, with a 20mm ripper cutter, which chewed through this material beautifully. Um, I've got a slightly different camera angle here, but unfortunately uh, the vibration made the camera shake rather a lot. Um, so it actually makes it seem a lot worse than it was. Um, it's quite a smooth cut. This, this shot is more realistic. Um, I then drilled some holes fairly arbitrarily. I did one close to the edge and one close to the uh, one close to the outer edge, one close to the inner edge. Uh, drilled and tapped for an M4 grub screw. That was the finished article with the grub screws fitted and a hole for the um, shaft grub screw. There's this shaft with a little divot in that stops it twisting. As you can imagine, I found that out fairly early on. So there's a M6 grub screw there to clamp it onto the shaft, and then I put in another one on top of that to stop the, the grub screw coming undone. We're then moving on to the tailstock now this part had been this tailstock arbor had been used before um, if you saw my slit saw arbor video um, th that was one of my old slit saw arbors um, which wasn't very good uh, I used a Morse 2 to Morse 4 adapter sleeve uh, gently tapping it into the headstock and 
and then it's just a case of machining the face down. There is a offset hole in this. I used a piece of um, round bar as a key, um, which does sort of get in the way of the bore for the bearings, um, but um, it didn't. Really, it's not really an issue. Um, I start by drilling um, progressive sizes um, into this material. Uh, I think I started with something like a eight or a ten there. Got up to I think this is a nineteen maybe. Might be 16. Um, I had to use the the uh, mister to keep the drill temperature down. As, it, as you can see, there's a bit of steam coming off there. Um, I then stepped up to a larger drill. I think this might be a 25 millimeter drill. And then finish the. Um, the hole making off of the boring tool because uh, my lathe can't cope with anything much larger than that uh, and then just gently tapped it out with a, a hammer now to fit the bearings I still don't have a press um, so I used my drill press which is probably not entirely advisable um, to press these bearings in. I'm just starting them off, just trying to get them vaguely square with that the hammer there and then using the drill press as a an arbor press which I'm going gently. So the first one went in I used a piece of nine and a half millimeter shaft to align the the bearings because uh, they're 10 millimeter 10 millimeter in ID bearings so I used a loose fitting shaft because I need to get it out afterwards um, but I need to sit it flat like that so again pressed it down this worked rather well the um, second bearing just slipped in so I've basically got two bearings there stacked one on top of the other um, to give myself a little bit of support for that long um, ER collet chuck speak of the devil so I was planning to put keyway into this, uh, so I put the put the chuck into a, a collet block and tried to machine it, and the mill just basically tickled and polished the surface. And a tiny amount of material came off, but it really didn't do much. So I gave up, put the um, long pulley on, and shoved it in the tailstock. So next we come to the tensioner plate. This is just a piece of 10 millimeter aluminium with some, some holes in to accept the various components. So we've got a slot, um, a counter bore and a through hole for the, the main bearing. Uh, this breakout here is for the uh, tool post extension coming off the, the bearing. Um, and then a couple of tapped holes for the, the angle at the top. Sliced off a bit of scrap aluminium, squared it up using a, a big Seco face mill um, that I sorted out a few months ago. Cutting the um, various holes all to the drawing using the DRO. Um, this actually came out really well, I was very pleased with it. These two holes off the bracket at the top, and then this is the centre hole for the the main bearing housing, and then three mounting holes. Um, just to support the plate. These go into the um, the outer ring of the um, the bearing, drawing those holes out. So again, using progressive drill sizes to open up this hole, and then finally finishing it off with the boring head. This piece of material also had some holes in it, which um, interrupted the cut. You can see the one just at the back there. That one disappeared. 
but you can see there's a, a slot um, just in that cutout. So next is the bearing, main bearing housing. Uh, this one I 3D printed just because of time constraints. Uh, I've created a drawing though just to uh, illustrate what's going on here. Um, if we look at it in the model, it's this red bit here. So I 3D printed the bearing housing, pressed the bearings in with the vise, uh, and then uh, drilled and tapped it for the tensioner plate. I uh, hadn't actually modelled in those holes, so uh, it's just tapped into 3D print at the moment, which isn't ideal. So the last bit um, I've got video of here is uh, making the tensioner bearing housing, this green part here. Let's just isolate that. Um, it was designed to be made out of bar stock, nice and simply. Um, there's an undercut here which allows it to run in the slot. Um, and then this chamfer here is just to clear the main bearing housing. Here's the drawing. Again, you can see it's a fairly simple part. It's made out of 19mm bar um, with a couple of inner diameters for the bearings. A few random numbers. Again, one day I'll be able to get my uh, Fusion to a point where I can make cleaner drawings. So I started with a piece of 22mm bar stock, which I've faced off. And then turned down to diameter. I used the balanced cuts technique, um, which I learned from John of John's workshop. Um, and that seemed to work fairly well. Ended up with something pretty close to what I wanted. And again opened out with progressive drills to um, make the bearing recess. Um, my only uh, cutting tool of roughly the right size was this 16mm <laughs> end mill, so I obviously had to um, run that countersink in to get it to centre. Now, I was worried this might cut oversize because there was a lot of chatter, but it fortunately cut uh, undersize, which meant that I was able to ream it out in the end uh, uh, and got a nice good fit for the bearing. I was able to press the bearing in with the tailstock, which was nice. Nice and easy to do at this stage. And then went about cutting the undercut. Parting this off um, with a power feed to put my hand in to catch it. And yeah. I took the part to, to the mill and clamped it in a 90mm collet in a collet block. And started to mill the flat on the sides. I then clamped it vertically uh, and basically eyeballed the um, uh, chamfer that needs to go on it, uh, rotated it with a spanner and started to remove material. This piece of material was, again, something very, very nice. Don't know what it was, but it machined really well. Uh, and then finally put the hole and tapped for M6 uh, for the adjustment knob. Now we get to sort of final assembly stage, and that's the part. Slots in there. And we're going to add the adjustment knob with its spring. Did a, a little bit of a feel to see how it ran. Uh, and added a little bit of oil because uh, it was a little bit unsmooth. I did a little bit of fettling with a file uh, which I haven't included here but uh, it basically runs quite smoothly now. Inserted the cutting head and then we've got the pulley that goes on the other end to clamp that in place basically. Uh, I managed to get four grub screws on this one, that's why I grew the two flanges out, just so that I could get a lot of uh, grip. Um, again, if it was done properly, I'd key everything together, key everything onto the shaft so uh, nothing could slip. And then finally I needed to put the um, tensioner pulley onto the 
bearing and I tried putting it in with a G-clamp but was unable to do it in situ so I had to take it out and hammer it in in the vise. Now the pulley is an old one that I had lying around and I just super glued that on the shaft. And so now we're here. So if you haven't seen the, the rough cut clip, um, here it is. Bollocks. As you can see, uh, there's a bit of a slippage issue with the belt. Um, so my thought was either to have two extra rollers sort of either side there so that would involve letting this one down a bit and then having a roller either side to sort of pinch the belt in to get a, a bit more wrap around each of the pulleys um, and hopefully a bit more tension so you'd have more springs working for you um, however a possibly even better solution is a longer belt um, and then we'd have two pulleys um, up sort of relatively high. So then you'd have one under there and one under there where the fingers are. Um, and that would mean that these would wrap around even more of the these uh, pulleys. Hopefully, you know, put a bit more torque through everything. Um, alternatively, I might look into whether I can do a sort of chain drive. Um, I'll see what bits are available. I'm mean, basically I went down this route because all these parts I either had kicking around, you know, so like this pulley, these belts, the bearings, all the bits were just kicking around in the workshop. So I just thought, what can I make out of what I've got? And this is what I came up with. But yeah, to 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 take this forward, I think I'm going to have to do a bit of research into um, the best type of drive for this whether there's a better way of driving it than via the um, uh, directly via the part. Obviously the 3D printed parts, so currently that's the, the two or the three pulleys that you see here and the main body there will be hopefully metal um, when I remake it. So that's basically where I'm at with this. Um, I, as I say, I want to attack this again in the new year, um, try and make it work properly. Um, I've got a number of things that I would like to do with it, so I'd appreciate it if uh, if you haven't already, um, please subscribe. And uh, if you actually liked the video, you could uh, hit the thumbs up. Um, and thank you for watching.